Members of the Right Honourable, the Lord Mayor. City of Adelaide Council meeting on Tuesday, the 8th of October 2019. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken of this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside of Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Kaurna people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respect to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Kaurna people living today. We also extend that respect to other language Aboriginal groups, Aboriginal language groups, my apologies, and other First Nations who may be present with us today. The Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with its six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Uh, members, please be seated. Members, we have uh, some apologies and leave of absence. We have the Deputy Lord Mayor on leave and an apology from Councillor Hyde. I'll uh, look for the confirmation of the minutes from the 24th of September. Thank you, Councillor Abraham, today for second. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, members, any changes, comments? If not, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour, those against, the minutes are carried. Um, we have one deputation tonight, and that's from Mr. Mark Henley, um, talking to the motion by Councillor Sims. Mr. Henley, if you can come forward. Thank you. Um, so it's not to add confusion, there's only one Mark Henley in the room. My name's Simon Sharp, and I'm the Chief Executive of the United Communities, and Mark Henley is the manager of our advocacy team. Um, I'd also like to acknowledge we, we'll just play a little bit of a tag team here in the few minutes that we've got to, to present. Um, I'd like to start by acknowledging that we've been on the traditional lands of the Ghana people um, and to thank the Council for giving us this opportunity to come and talk to you about a topic that is pretty passionate to us and United Communities. Uh, a topic that we've been advocating for for quite a number of years, which is in relation to gambling um, regulation in South Australia, and particularly the impacts of uh, that regulation on people who use poker machines. Um, it's a topic that we have advocated for for many years. It's a topic that we're very passionate about because we see the end results and the impact on families and the health of individuals uh, when um, when people are, are impacted by their engagement with uh, with gambling, you'd be aware that um, on the 25th of August, the Attorney General introduced to Parliament several proposed changes to the regulation of gambling, particularly to the regulation of poker machines in South Australia. Uh, she did that without any consultation. I have to add with um, those of us that actually pick up the pieces of gambling harm in this state, which was pretty disappointing. There are a number of reforms that were proposed. Um, the one that concerns us most significantly is the proposal to introduce note acceptors to every poker machine in South Australia. I think it would be fair to say that, um, without wanting to address all the other reforms, that if that reform itself was actually carried through in the parliament, so if note acceptors were actually put into every machine in South Australia, we would significantly increase the risk of harm to problem gamblers uh, in this state. Um, and you know, our proposition uh, is that that um, of all the proposals being put forward should be pushed back against. Um, we know that more gambling addiction will actually um, create more problems for families. 
more problems for individuals will probably create spikes in terms of domestic and family violence, more crime and ultimately more poverty in South Australia. If you think this is just an emotive argument, I'm going to ask Mark just to talk to some of the evidence that actually strongly suggests why no acceptors will actually increase harm for South Australians and including the citizens of this city. Thank you very much. The evidence. The Norwegian government banned note acceptors on poker machines, resulting in a 16% drop. 16, 16% drop in the number of calls to the National Problem Gambling Helpline and a 24% reduction in the number of people seeking help for, pro for gambling problems. That was over the, the following 12 months, rates that have been maintained. Closer to home, in 2013, the Northern Territory Government allowed um, no acceptors to be introduced to poker machines there with up to $1,000 in any note denomination able to be loaded onto a poker machine. The result? Gambling losses in hotels and clubs increased by 24% the following year. Meanwhile, the Productivity Commission in Australia um, and other researchers have found that at least at least 40% of poker machine revenue comes from people with a gambling problem. Recently in South Australia, a gambling prevalence study has been uh, released by the South Australian Government. Amongst other findings, that prevalence study showed that when looking at people with gambling problems, 85% of these people with gambling problems play poker machines. This was nearly double the rate for any other form of gambling activity. Poker machines are still the largest form of gambling harm in the state. The study found that problem gambling in South Australia is highest amongst the lowest income bracket of people in our society, i.e. people with the annual incomes below $25,000. We know the industry is changing. Since 2012, there's been a 30% reduction in the number of people playing poker machines in South Australia, a 9% reduction in poker machine losses at the same time, meaning that less people are playing poker machines, but those that are playing are playing more, spending more money, and in fact, harm levels are rising. This research has been uh, uh, collaborated around the world, New Zealand, Canada, Europe, other jurisdictions. Another finding from that prevalent study was that there is a very clear increase in poor health as problem gambling behaviour increases. Self-reported health declines as problem gambling increases. We have to provide um, full citation of any of this evidence. Thanks, Mark. I'll just make a couple of final concluding comments. Um, so we think the evidence is overwhelmingly against introducing no acceptors. Um, of course, you know, there may be proponents that argue that there are advantages in bringing this about. I just want to address a couple of those very briefly because so, and debunk them. I'm sorry, Simon. Is it time's up? Your time is okay, up. Okay, no, that's fine. Oh, thank you Hopefully and Mark we'll put it, for uh, coming to our the pleasure. invitation tonight. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, members, that takes us to item number six, which is the petition removal of the trees in North Terrace. I have a mover in Councillor Sims and a seconder. Sorry, was it Councillor Moran? Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Sims, did, you wish, did anybody wish to speak to the petition? It's to note and accept. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, regrettably, um, the trees have already um, been removed, but I do want to uh, note and accept this petition in recognition of the strong campaign that's been run by members of the community on this. Um, I understand that the 100 uh, signatures were actually collected uh, within a few hours on grand final day, um, and that is testament to the uh, huge amount of support there is in the community for um, retaining these trees. Um, I have to say, Lord Mayor, I um, went down on Saturday morning to bear witness to uh, what I regard as being senseless destruction of the natural world. Um, it was uh, profoundly disappointing, in fact devastating, to see uh, these beautiful old trees being pulped. Um, and I am very, very disappointed in um, the decision made by this council to remove them. It's my view that we have a responsibility as elected councillors to stand with the community. Um, we shouldn't be there wielding the axe 
uh, to our historic trees. And um, I'm very disappointed that the council went down this path. And I urge people to think very carefully, to learn these lessons and to stand with the community in the future in um, defending our environment from the attacks of the state government, because this was a very disappointing outcome. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Um, for accuracy, for the record, I do actually want to also note that it was nine regulated and one significant tree, as opposed to eight regulated and two significant trees. For the um, minutes, thank you. And through you, Lord Mayor, just also for accuracy, I, I understand the, the matter. The decision of council to remove them, council did not remove them. It was Renewal SA, the State Government Agency. I just want to be really clear on that. So, members. If there's nothing further, then we will accept this. Uh, uh, look, Lord Mayor, I just also wish to record my disappointment that the, uh, the trees were removed in this fashion. I do believe that this council could have prevented their destruction had we shown some leadership, had we defied the state government, there may have been a chance that we could have saved those trees. And I must say, uh, I'm a member of a, a walking group in the city of Adelaide. And, on Sunday morning, we were walking through the city and members of the group asked that we go to North Terrace to have a look at what was the, uh, the boulevard it was. And uh, I must say to you that the members of my walking group were very distressed at the sight of that and asked uh, who could have done this. Uh, and of course, I was happy to furnish them with the details. Um, they were very, very saddened as I am. Councillor Cameron. Uh, well, thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I might, uh, I'd like to add to the record uh, that, uh, that, the, that, that my decision, and I'm certain, uh, the decision of all of the other members on the removal of the trees uh, was, not, was not a decision, Lord Mayor, taken so, lightly. I'm sorry, um, Councillor Carroll, we are just speaking to the petition rather than the decision of Council. Okay, uh, well, um, I, I, uh, speaking to the petition in the spirit of, of the other uh, two speakers this, e uh, this evening, uh, I'd like to say that the decision was not taken lightly. Um, I look forward to the growth of the 29 trees, which were the 29 trees which will take the place of the existing trees, uh, and particularly uh, noting the climate change uh, findings of recent studies that find that newer, that younger trees absorb more carbon than old trees. Uh, I, I look forward to uh, the, 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 the I, I look forward to the I look forward to the uh, I look forward to the precinct uh, in the coming years as the new trees are allowed to flourish. Thank you, Councillor Kerra. Um, I'll probably remind the gallery, please. Um, Councillor Moran. Um, yes, I too am pleased to see this petition, and I think it points to council how to stress the communities. Uh, this was an easy, easy decision by the people that voted for it. Um, a very easy decision. Um, the council and the Lord Mayor agreed to look for another arborist. That arborist came back with a 24, a 20 year plus, which is in arborist terms, a long lived tree. Um, Councillor Moran, we're speaking to the petition, please. The, 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 the motion is to note the petition, so we're just speaking to the acceptance of the petition. Um, I, I'm just, I mean, the door was opened by Councillor Kerr saying it was a difficult decision. It wasn't a difficult decision at all. The council uh, that did, uh, had made up their mind before. Um, I, I'm reminded of this saying, when good people sit on their hands, evil prevails. To have the CEO say- Councillor Moran, we are talking to the acceptance of okay, the petition. Okay, can I address what the CEO, and you, you said you opened that door. The CEO and you both said it was eight or nine trees. It doesn't matter how many trees. No, I was correcting for the accuracy of the Okay, well, I'm correcting for the which accuracy. Is in, which is within the petition. It doesn't matter if it's one or more less trees. This was a stately, beautiful avenue of trees. There were no reason, the, the um, arborist report said they would live for a long and healthy time. It wasn't a hard decision. We know that the people that voted for it had made the decision before that, that was quite clear. And I apologise to the people that had to write the petition in speaking to some of the petition makers. I think the reason that people are so despair of the state of politics today is there is no point in objecting. There is no point in making a petition. Your politicians are listening. 
look at the REPAC, look at all those petitions. And unfortunately, the council is, has so disappointedly, disappointingly copied other politicians, the bigger politicians. So it is a very sad day. And to say that it was difficult and that we're all distressed, don't, no, you're not. You're not distressed at all. So don't, don't carry on that lie. Thank you, members. We will go back to move it to accept the petition, Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. To speak um, to the petition, one of the reasons why it's really critically important that we note and accept this petition tonight is because the community have been shut out of this process. Um, there was an air of secrecy about this. Renewal SA decided to remove the trees on uh, Saturday during a long weekend, and I think that was a regrettable process. But I must say I was really alarmed to uh, go to um, the uh, site on Saturday morning and to see security guards standing at the public transport. Councillor Sims, we're talking to the what, petition. It is related to the petition, Lord Mayor, because mm. it's explaining the importance of recognising the community's opposition on this. And really, I think Renewal SA should not have had security guards Councillor Sims, there we are talking to space. accepting the petition. I apologise, but that is no, the rules of I, the chamber. We I, are talking to the petition. I totally understand that, Lord Mayor. The point I'm making is that the petition demonstrates the strength of community concern around this. And uh, that was further demonstrated on Saturday when members of the community sought to take photos of the destruction of these trees and were obstructed from doing so by security guards from Renewal SA. I have serious questions about the process that's been adopted here and I will follow those up in questions without notice. Thank you, thank you. Members, uh, can we vote that the petition be accepted? Those in favour, those against, that is carried. We now go to item 7.1, which are the recommendations of committee. Um, the first recommendation is the City of Adelaide Annual Report. Thank you, Councillor Martin. A seconder? Councillor Canole. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? Oh, look, Lord Mayor, only uh, to repeat um, the praise of the administration um, last week. Uh, this is, in fact, a very open report. It contains much detail, which has not previously been made available to elected members, um, including that we have 700 secrets. I beg your pardon, the CEO calls them confidentiality orders. We have uh, 700 uh, confidentiality orders. Um, uh, may I just also say that um, to have those employment numbers break down uh, according to age and also uh, Indigenous background, I think is really, really important. So thank you to the administration. Thank you for thanking the administration, Councillor Martin. Councillor Canal, did you wish to speak to it? Members? If not, to the move to summer. Councillor Martin, thank you. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, recommendation two is the Adelaide Airport preliminary draft master plan. I look for a mover. Councillor Martin, a seconder. Councillor Abraham, today. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? I need to say thank you again to the administration. It encapsulates uh, yes, <laughs> twice in the one night. It encapsulates uh, all of the uh, concerns of um, the city, I think, uh, and also uh, the ratepayers in North Adelaide. I'm very grateful. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Abraham's in it. Members, if not, back to the mover. Councillor Martin. Thank you. Uh, all those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us to recommendation three, which is a significant tree removal retrospective in Pelsa Park. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Seconder, Councillor Canal. Councillor Abraham, Councillor Canal. Members? If not, I'll go back to the mover. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, recommendation four is the Flinders Street pedestrian crossing improvements. Councillor Donovan and a seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Councillor Donovan, did you wish to speak to it? Only to continue the thanks that we've been having to administration. This is such a, a, a highly um, populated area. There's so much pedestrian traffic through this area and this crossing, so it's a great solution that we're moving forward on. Thank, Thank you, you Councillor. Councillor Abraham today. Members, if not, back to the move to sum up. Uh -huh. Members, those in favour, those against, that is carried. I have recommendation five, which is the North Terrace, uh, George Street Cycling Safety, uh, Councillor Abraham today, and seconded by Councillor Donovan. Councillor Abraham today. 
Why not, Lord Mayor? Uh, also to thank the administration and also uh, um, thank them for providing us uh, with the number of options and the costings for uh, every option. Thank you. Councillor Donovan. Thank you. And just to add to that, um, the uh, option that we're approving or that we're moving forward with tonight that is also uh, managing the high number of, again, pedestrians that cross at this area, um, all of the doctors and nurses and visitors going across to the hospital. I think the solution put forward by administration met not only the initial uh, request from the petitioners to improve safety for the cyclists, that has exceeded expectations um, by also meeting the demand for all of the pedestrians that have been haphazardly crossing in that area. So it's a great solution that we're moving forward with. Thank you once again. Thank you, members. If not, back to the mover. Summed up. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Recommendation number six, sanitising strategy to alleviate asthma. I look for a mover. Councillor Abraham today, seconded by Councillor Knoll. Uh, Councillor Abraham, Councillor Knoll, members, not go back to the mover. Members, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Um, recommendation number seven, which is the International Ambassador Program. Councillor Ho, look for a seconder. Uh, Councillor Sims. Councillor Ho, did you wish to speak to him? Uh, yes. Uh, well, just like to thanks to Emmy for all the hard work, and I look forward to see the application open. Thank you. Councillor Sims. Members, if not, I'll go to the move to sum up. Thank you. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Um, I now go to item 8.1, uh, which is the uh, Brown Hill and Keswick Creek Stormwater Board for the board member of appointment. Um, just before I look for a mover, uh, members, I hope you received the further um, information from administration noting that this uh, appointment was made in the last term of council, so you may not have had the background information. Um, I will look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Moran, and a seconder. Councillor Martin. Councillor Moran, did you wish to speak to it? Uh, no, I don't. Councillor Martin? No. Members? If not, I'll go back to the mover. Councillor Moran? No. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. I have a question on notice. Was withdrawn, Councillor Sims? Yes. And I go to questions without notice, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Can administration please advise when they were informed by Renewal SA of the time and date of the removal of the trees from North Terrace? CEO. Very Lord Mayor Clinton, can you please respond? Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, just to um, advise Council, there was a, a process that we went through last week, so I can try and explain um, that process to the best of my ability. Um, the information has come from our permits team. Uh, Tuesday, 1st of October, City Works application was received by the City of Adelaide for the tree removal um, from Renewal SA, noting a date of Sunday, the 6th of October, was the proposed date for the works. Uh, in the ensuing days, Wednesday the 2nd and Thursday the 3rd, uh, there were discussions between the City of Adelaide permits team and the applicant um, uh, regarding the works and the traffic management and the associated uh, requirements of the permit. Uh, on Thursday the 3rd of October, uh, City of Adelaide staff verbally advised the, the applicant that um, Sunday was not um, an appropriate day to be undertaking the works due to the legislative um, noise restrictions on Sundays. And on Friday, the 4th of October, the applicant came back with um, a date of Saturday, the 5th of October. And at that time, approval was granted under the permit conditions. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. In light of that process, why were uh, councillors only advised of the decision at about 6 p.m. on Friday evening. By the decision, I mean that the time and details of the removal. It sounds like this process was in train for some time. See you. Thanks, Clinton. Uh, through you, Lord Mayor. Um, I personally was aware of the decision at about 10 to 4 on Friday, the 4th of October, and took to advise um, councillors uh, within the hour. Okay, thank you for clarifying. 
Can administration uh, advise what arrangements have been made for the wildlife that used to live in the uh, trees um, that were on North Terrace? CEO. Thanks, Clinton. Through you, Lord Mayor. Um, I can confirm that as part of the permit that was approved um, through City of Adelaide Permits team, uh, fauna rescue um, were employed by Renewal SA to inspect, monitor and rescue any of the um, wildlife or fauna that were in the trees. Um, there were five personnel from that organisation on site um, from, I believe, 6am through to 5pm on Saturday. And I can confirm that one possum was removed um, safely from the area and was uh, re-released into the botanical gardens. And what about the other wildlife? There were uh, more than just one possum there. Do we know what happened to the other wildlife in the area? Uh, three, Lord Mayor. Um, that, that was the only wildlife that was reported to, uh, through the, to the permits team was the one possum. Um, I can only take that the five personnel from Fauna Rescue would have identified um, any other wildlife would have been apparent. Just to clarify, that's the only wildlife that was removed safely from the from the trees. Uh, to my understanding, yes. Thanks. Um, thank you. And also, Councillor Sims, if I can thank you for giving us um, the CEO and I notice so we were able to get the answers for your questions tonight. Thank you. Um, members, are there any other questions without notice? Councillor Martin. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, OK, public meeting of the North Adelaide Society on Wednesday, September 24th, was told that uh, despite Councillor Kouris' motion the night before to rescind the local area traffic management, uh, traffic and parking management trial, including the issue of on-street uh, parking permits for residents and eventually to businesses, that in fact the local area traffic and parking management trial was still continuing. Could the administration advise if the trial is continuing or whether in fact it finished with that motion? CEO. Three, Lord Mayor, we need to take that on notice. So it, the rescission motion did not end the trial. Yeah. It did end the trial. Sorry, through the CEO. Clear, thanks. My understanding would be that the rescission motion did end the trial. Okay, so thank I'm not you. sure the commentary that was opposite to that. No, no, that's yeah. provided great clarity. Thank you. Um, the same public meeting. Second question, okay, Lord Mayor? Certainly, if we can answer it. Uh, the same public meeting of the North Adelaide Society on Wednesday 24th was told that as part of the consultation uh, resulting from Councillor Kouris' motion, the uh, reverting of 340 timed parking spaces back to 340 untimed spaces and other changes uh, would prompt a street-by-street -street survey by council staff of residents and businesses. Has that street-by-street -street survey of residents and businesses begun? Will it begin? And uh, if not, uh, when? That's probably a better question on notice, but if there's any answers you can give us. CEO? Claire, thanks. Uh, my understanding is that work um, commences pretty soon, but um, I can't remember whether it's this week or next week. I do have a date, so I'm happy to follow up. So staff um, will go out and speak to each resident in North Adelaide and each business? Not necessarily. The full consultation to be undertaken within the 28 days is still being finalised. Um, the website has been updated, but I'm happy to share with council members tomorrow uh, what that process looks like. And could we specifically be advised if there is a house by house, business by business consultation? Perhaps if I could ask for your question to be forwarded and then we can um, ask administration to answer it in full. I'm happy to do that. Lord that would be great. Members, if there's no other questions, we will go on to motions without notice. Councillor Sims, 11.1, motion on notice, amendment to standing order. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move the motion as printed and seek a seconder. Sorry, I didn't 
General Markov. Councillor Moran, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Lord Mayor. I won't read out the um, motion, um, but it is fairly clear. The motion is for Council to add new standing orders to allow questions with or without notice from members of the public. I'm hopeful, Lord Mayor, that this won't be too controversial, as uh, I regard this as being a fairly simple accountability measure. It's by taking out the middleman, so to speak, and allowing the public to ask questions directly of councillors and administration, I believe we can empower the community and strengthen our democracy at a local level. Now, I know that some councillors may be a little bit anxious about this, Lord Mayor, but I say to any councillor who has those anxieties, you have nothing to fear from the community that you represent. We are here to serve the community and we must be answerable to them. And it's not good enough for us to simply say, well, we face the people every four years at an election. This gives the opportunity to the community to hold their representatives to account every two weeks at a council meeting, and I really welcome that. I think it would bring the town back into town hall, bring the people back into town hall and make these meetings more interactive and more engaging. And there are lots and lots of issues that I know are of interest to our community. Just recently, I had a member of the public ask me about uh, what was happening in Chinatown. These are the sorts of questions that uh, members of the public could come to uh, this council and ask us about. And of course, there are a myriad of um, other issues. One of the benefits of being able to ask members of the public in a public session, ask members of council a question in public session, is that it gets the response recorded on uh, the public record. And that is a powerful thing. That's a powerful accountability measure. I know some elected members are a little bit concerned about the impact that this might have, but Lord Mayor, I want to remind elected members that we can change the standing orders at any time. So if we implement this and we feel that it's not working as effectively as it could be or has created unanticipated issues, then of course we can uh, rescind it. And there is precedent for that within this council term when it comes to standing orders. So I encourage members to view this as an opportunity to trial a more participatory approach to local democracy. I think it would be an exciting thing. We know that there is a huge amount of disillusionment with uh, our political system at the moment. Anything that makes people more engaged with uh, local government, makes people more engaged with their democracy, I think is worth us looking at. And I encourage members to support this and to embrace this opportunity. Thank you, Councillor Moran. Councillor Moran. I'll reserve my right, Thank you. Councillor Habri Habrigan, is it? Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, can I ask administration a quick question before I speak to this motion? Um, is administration able to provide the number of um, uh, uh, emails, calls, correspondence in, uh, in, in general for the past uh, 12 months that we've had from residents, ratepayers, visitors, or anyone else? See you. Can I ask Rudy to respond, please? Sure. Through the Lord Mayor, that is 170,000 interactions with the customer centre noted over 12 months. That's just through the customer uh, service centre, was it? That's correct. So does that take into account social media and, and other platforms as well? No, it doesn't. Okay. Okay. Okay, Lord Mayor. Well, uh, given that number, I guess I'll, I'll start by uh, uh, starting at administration comment. And the first comment that uh, that they've made is that the role of a council member is to represent the interests of residents and ratepayers. Lord Mayor, if we're not here to represent our residents and ratepayers, I don't know why we are here. I don't know why we get here every Tuesday, be at a council or a committee meeting to sit around and, and discuss things if, uh, if we're not here to do that, if we're not here to act as a conduit between the chamber and our communities. Our communities do um, deserve a voice, they do have a voice and they should be heard. Uh, as we heard um, earlier tonight, we had a deputation and we had a petition. There, there are many ways that uh, the community can reach the, uh, uh, the chamber. We've got a, uh, an award-winning customer uh, uh, service centre that uh, um, provides uh, services in more than one language, I believe. 
Um, the, the different platforms that uh, residents and ratepayers, visitors, or any other uh, uh, any other rate concerned individual can contact us, whether it is through the phone, whether it is through email, whether it is through social media. Uh, but if uh, but if that's not um, uh, I guess if that's not giving them the answers that they want, they've got counsellors here. They can go through us, and it's not just one counsellor per ward either. We've got multiple counsellors per ward. We've got three counsellors in the central ward. We've got four of us area counsellors. We've got yourself, Lord Mayor. So this brings me to the question: Why are we here? And I guess yeah. the question is. <laughs> Why are we here? <laughs> Councillor Sims is uh, Councillor Sims is uh, telling us that he's wanting to cut out the middle men and women. So are we the middle men and women that need to be cut out? And if that's the case, then I think Councillor Sims, you should probably put in a proposal to the uh, local government report and uh, have the chamber completely restructured. Councillor Moran. I wasn't going to speak because it was such a straightforward motion, but after that, gobbledygook, I'm just forced to. Uh, yes, most of the um, things that come in, and it's interesting that you had that answer so glibly, uh, glibly. It didn't have to be taken on notice at all, did it? Um, but seriously, most of the things are about parking fines, uh, normal things, they're not political um, questions. That's the normal day-to-day -day business of the council and goes mainly to the administration. Um, I don't know why some councillors are here, but why I'm here is to um, have it open and the chamber is the councillors preserve. The rest is the administration. This is your area. This is where you're strong. This is where you're powerful. Um, so to have people come in and ask you questions is a, is a basic right of the public to do so. It might be annoying. I found it incredibly annoying when Martin Hayes is the last person who used to let millions of questions through, and often I couldn't even bear to hear them. But um, to, say, to, to be, sit on a council that has tried to gag its councillors so that we can't speak to our public, and then to say that the public then cannot speak to us is a very, very dangerous road to hold. I do know why I'm here. Um, I know exactly why I'm here and I'm to, to listen to the public voice. If it's uncomfortable for you, that's fine. Don't answer their questions. But it's not uncomfortable. Of course, it's uncomfortable all the time. Rather, they just all shut up and went away. It's like the hospitals would be nicer work without the patients and the doctors. We work fantastically. <laughs> Politics would be great without the nuisance ratepayers. So you're right, man. Cut them off. Don't let them come in and speak. It's quite different to pick up a phone, have a chat to you, have a chat to me, have a chat to, to Claire, to come and stand here and ask councillors the hard questions. It's a completely different thing. It's very glib to trot out numbers and say we are so approachable. Um, we're not that approachable. And if you come here and you've got a question to ask your councillors, I don't like it, but I'll put up with it because that's what democracy is. I know you've all decided to vote against this as per the usual numbers. That is disappointing. And don't roll your eyes, Jesse. You no. won't vote for this. Sure. Neither will Mary. She's busting to say something. Um, but this won't get up, unfortunately. But it is a stain on this council that we have become so um, so resistant to the public voice. We've chopped trees down, we're putting private clubs in the parklands. We have got to stop and listen, no matter how uncomfortable it is. When um, the Lord Mayor and I were sitting here as um, area councillors last time, it was a much more open forum. I found, found it quite uncomfortable and confronting, but to bring that now, I, I miss it because you do hear from your brave people that want to ask you why you did something. So I know this is going down, but it is again something this council should think about why they're doing this. Councillor Kerrin. Uh, well, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, it's always a bit of a worry when you're singled out by the uh, Praetorian Guard, uh, Councillor Sims. Um, uh, but uh, but I'll press on anyway, just by the fear. The, the, I might tremble with fear while I speak. Um, look, um, look, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, history, history, Lord Mayor, and the classics uh, have told us have told us, Lord Mayor, um, be wary if if uh, if someone uh, supplies, if someone brings a giant horse uh, out the front of your house, a giant wooden horse. Uh, be careful and think twice before uh, bringing that horse into your house uh, without, without uh, first checking uh, what might be uh, on that horse 
and what might be inside that horse, Lord Mayor, especially, Lord Mayor, especially if that horse is painted green. Um, the, <laughs> especially if it is painted green. Councillor Curry, you're green. debating the motion. I, and I am, Lord Mayor, I am absolutely debating the motion because that is absolutely the germane point here. 30 or 40 years ago, 30 or 40 years ago, before the age of activism, uh, we may well have taken this motion in good faith and passed the motion in good faith because uh, 30 or 40 years ago, it was probably uh, really uh, about what it said at face value. But that is no longer the case, Lord Mayor. That is no longer the case in the age of activism and in the age of gaming the system. And that, unfortunately, uh, is what is, is I, I, I suspect, I um, suspect is I'm going on here. I'm waiting for you to talk to the motion, Councillor I'm Kerry. talking absolutely to the motion, Lord Mayor, if, if you will. We, 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 uh, uh, members of the gallery, yeah, if yeah. you actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to ask you to leave if you can't, if you actually can't be quiet. But Lord Mayor, seriously, he is abusing us. Um, and thank, thank you, you Councillor Moran. Councillor Kerrow, can you finish and can you actually talk to the motion? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the, look, <laughs> the, the, the preamble that I had before, before I was uh, interrupted uh, is, is very much to the point. We're talking about expanding democracy and allowing people to come in, uh, allowing questions to come directly to the chamber. Unfortunately, that is not um, what... It, it is quite apparent that what will happen, Lord Mayor, is those questions uh, will not be representative. There is a high probability that what we will be faced with is an attempt to, uh, to uh, utilise this, uh, this motion, utilise this change for activism. Uh, for matters that do not, that are not representative of the broad public, and that is the reason that I speak in opposition to this, and that is why I say this is essentially a Trojan horse. That's why I bring this up. Um, uh, and the Praetorian Guard is speaking. The the the, the swords are out. Lord Mayor, Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims's Praetorian Guard has got got the sword sort out. I better watch out. So that 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 is the reason, Lord Mayor. I say this in all seriousness. Um, we. Uh, 30 seconds. Members, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Um, Members okay. in the gallery, I'll ask one last time because otherwise I will actually ask you to leave. I'm, I apologise, but they are the rules of the chamber. Councillor Kerry has another minute. Um, the, another minute. We, we, we know exactly what will happen. The, we are the middlemen, uh, if, if that's how you want to put it. We have been delegated by the public. And it is the hard-working public, the hard-working mums and dads who work uh, hard, who pay rates, who pay rates, who pay rates, uh, who delegate to us the job uh, of, of, of dealing with uh, questions and dealing with issues of import in the chamber. They will not be heard through this system, Lord Mayor. I can guarantee you that what you will hear is the, is the, is the uh, pushing of the barrow from that corner over there. That is all you, we will hear from because that is the gaming of the system to which I was referring to, Lord Mayor, in my preamble. Thank you, Councillor Kiro. I have Councillor Kouros. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, sorry, Mayor. Um, I just want to state, uh, the advertiser reported back in May 2019 that there were some mixed reviews from the Burnside City Council when they implemented this. Um, some um, councillors for residents um, used the time to grandstand and other councillors um, said it was like throwing rocks without necessarily any evidence. However, as a rate power, as uh, uh, Councillor Abraham today pointed out, there are many avenues in which if you want to voice anything that you want uh, to know in regards to council matters. You have your ward councillor, which as we pointed out is two. You have your area councillor, as we pointed out is four. You can log on to the City of Adelaide website and there's a link for public involvement and meetings. This allows the public to watch the meeting. They can uh, request to speak at the meeting if, they, if they're happy to, or they can lodge a petition in regards to any decisions that were made at that time on that council meeting. On top of this, we have a customer care department, which as we as, uh, pointed out, we have 170,000 inquiries that come through just our customer care. You have your chat online, you have your social media, you have direct email to staff. And if none of these options suit our community, you also have a telephone. So everything is covered. To place further pressure on our staff is, is not creating efficiencies. And this is what we requested from our council. We requested a council for more efficiencies. As an elected member, we need to be more engaged. We don't need to place more pressure on our administration. That, that's what we're here for. 
For all these reasons, I do not support this motion as I feel strongly that as an elected member, Councillor Moran, please. I feel strongly as an elected member, you should be able to represent the community. You should be available to them. You'd be available to answer their questions. And if you can't, you can always approach your administration and get those answers that you need. That is what we're here for. And that is, um, that is what we're here for. And that- Councillor Moran, please. So the the whole way, well, the whole process of having your elected member there for the community, for you to approach them and then to speak with administration to be able to answer any of your questions. And, and as I pointed out, we've got every other avenue in which you can do that within the council. Thank you. I have a, a question from Councillor Abrahams then, and then I have Councillor Martin. Just a quick question. Um, on the City of Adelaide website, do all of the elected members have their contact details um, uh, shown on there in terms of an email address and a, and a phone number? Yeah. Through me, yes, we do. Um, uh, is, is there anything else uh, that, that's shown on that page? Is there a, uh, um, I don't know, a link to, uh, to that person's social media page or anything else like that? Yeah. That is correct, yes. Yeah, okay, thank you. I have Councillor Martin and Councillor Knopp. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, um, I'd like to uh, move a, an amendment to this, if I may, which may go some way to addressing the concerns of my colleagues. Um, in listening to the debate, I, I'm just wondering if it might not be helpful if we added um, perhaps an 11 and a 12. A and the 11 being that a maximum of three questions be allowed um, per meeting with priority given to written questions. And that as 12, um, we, um, we limit the new standing order to March 2020 when it will be reviewed. Happy to accept as a variation, Lord Mayor. Thank you. And your seconder? Thank you. Uh, we'll just capture that, Councillor Martin. Um, a, a person asking a question. Oh, sorry, 11. Um, uh, that uh, a maximum of three questions be allowed per meeting with preferences given or preference given to questions, written questions on notice. And that um, the sorry, new- just, Sorry, just a moment, Councillor. Yes, yes, and there was a point 12. 12. Um, the new standing order to be reviewed by the elected body in March 2020. Now, members, um, I have to ask the Chamber whether they'll also accept the variation. If I could see by a show of hands, you'll accept the variation. It's just a variation. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, can I have a show of hands to vary, accept the variation I had four? We can vote it down, but uh, it's not it's back in the response variation. to the issues you've raised. Um, so I'm sorry, the variation. Oh, okay, we've got five. We have. Was that yours, Councillor? Thank you. So we have. Oh. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I don't understand uh, what the problem is. Um, this is just a means by which ratepayers can come in here and ask questions personally, unfiltered. Moreover, the provisions that are provided here uh, allow the presiding officer to dismiss frivolous or vexatious questions, those which are, for whatever reason, deemed not appropriate. Uh, and so there is no issue of wasting of time. The filter is, in fact, the presiding member. Um, moreover, if it is a trial for 
three months of council meetings, uh, what possible harm is there in that? Uh, and I make the point that, uh, and I did, I did hear Councillor Kouros's reference to, uh, to Burnside, which of course, as we all know, is the shining light of local government practice. Um, I, I would reference, however, other councils, and there are literally dozens of councils throughout Victoria, Tasmania, and Western Australia who allow this very practice. And in fact, in WA, it's mandated. Let me read to you from uh, uh, the state government, local government website. Legislation provides that a maximum of 15 minutes of each council or committee meeting is allocated to public question time. Public question time is an important opportunity for people to interact with their council and is seen by many of the public as a way to apply scrutiny to council decision making. And then the Act goes on to talk about how it's best to manage uh, question time. It talks it talks about managing effectively, managing public question time can be challenging. Perhaps that's the issue, perhaps it's challenging. The freedom afforded to local government in the Act means that different rules for public question time exist across local governments. Greater prescription could provide clear and consistent rules. Uh, it is suggested and then it lists a whole range of measures that can be employed by council administration to ensure that it runs efficiently and it provides that opportunity for ordinary people, um, hard-working mums and dads, as uh, Councillor Kira called them, uh, and indeed uh, anybody to come in here and actually ask a question. Now, members, this is fairly straightforward. Uh, if it turns out to be a turkey, in March 2020, you can say, told you so, and dismiss it. In the meantime, I'd ask you to have a sufficiently open mind to give it a go just until March. Thank you. I have Councillor Kiong. So just, just work well, working to the amended motion. Um, I mean, I look at this and say, uh, here we are delivering another level of complexity to our council. And look, we have a diverse range of councillors here. They basically represent every variety and, and every uh, position that the public would, can want. And I mean, our role here, as well as with administration, is to deliver uh, outcomes for the uh, for the community. And it is about by majority. And that's just how it works, and that's why it should be. The point is, though, I mean, that we have every opportunity to go and speak uh, to councillors and also to, to the administration. But the, what the point of here is that. It is about getting outcomes and getting uh, you know, structured answers and things like that and doing it in a way uh, that will deliver uh, for the community as in, a, in, a, in, a, in a format where we can debate it, etc. And it's not about asking the questions. We already have deputations, we have petitions, we have all these, uh, these uh, ways that people can talk directly to us. And they, they exist, they, we don't need to add another level uh, just to just to vary. So a bit more interesting, I suppose, for, for the way we want to run this, uh, you know, the meetings. But the bottom line is that uh, by filtering it so that uh, the administration has the opportunity to already present their, their, uh, their various facts, whatever it is they need to do, we get to debate it. We make an efficient outcome uh, which by, by majority vote and you know we get on with it because I mean uh, this only extends the length of time that the actual meeting runs without necessarily improving the outcomes um, and it is about us doing our jobs on behalf of the community and they already have adequate uh, uh, means by which we, they can inform and, and uh, request uh, from all of us to do our jobs and and I was just before informed that we had that there was a process previously um, you know enabling this by our exalted long-term councillor. But the point is, is that we don't have it now. And I'm um, just questioning if this was coming up, well, you know, why, did, why is it no longer part of, uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, you know the, the, the way the chamber runs? Um, you know, but, you know, we have now an effective system and I do believe that people are being represented and they do have their voice here and they're sitting here and sitting over there by administration. Thank you. I have a question from Councillor Martin. Yes, could the administration provide advice as to the difference between the model that is proposed in this motion and the questioning which was allowed in the previous council by the Lord Mayor? Um, perhaps I can answer on behalf as, as the Lord Mayor. Uh, no, I mean the previous Lord Mayor, not you. Uh, yes, I know, but in, I was on the previous council oh, okay. and there were questions allowed of deputations by the council members, but not the other way around. And this, the difference with this is that it would be an independent process by which people can approach council 
and ask questions. This is a different process altogether from deputations and forums. Thank you. So in, in previous terms of council, um, that, that we could ask questions of the deputation. This is public asking questions of us. Um, members, if there's no more questions. No, sorry. Are the variation? Yeah, it's a variation. Um, so just for a point of clarification, actually, I was going to talk to that in terms of um, that there were questions to the deputations. Um, and also, just again, a point of clarification, uh, the gag order was not to stop any councillors from talking to the public or to the media. It was a process so that the motions were not debated before they were lodged. The, and that, that we did not talk to the media about the motions lodged until they were published with the administration comment, um, mainly because there were a lot of motions that went to the paper that didn't actually get lodged or debated in the chamber. I'll go back to the mover to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. And look, I do want to uh, thank Councillor Martin for suggesting that variation because I think that is a, a sensible way forward. It addresses some of the concerns that have been expressed by uh, members of council tonight around saying, oh, you know, we may get a, a huge number of questions um, lodged. Um, and it also, of course, highlights the fact that we can review this in sets of sunset clause of March 2020. So, you know, if members you have some doubt about this, I would encourage you to give it a go um, and to vote for it. I must say, I'm rather um, shocked by some of the bizarre comments that have been made. Um, this is a council that has uh, supported some of the most radical changes to standing orders I have ever seen. Uh, tough restrictions on talking to the media um, by elected members. The concentration of new powers in the hands of the Deputy Lord Mayor to chair every meeting. A range of other um, measures. And yet when it comes to giving the opportunity for the community to ask questions, this is being presented as uh, some sort of radical doomsday scenario for our democracy. I think actually this would strengthen our democracy at a local level. We've just been through a budget process where we had very little input from the community um, because council opposed my suggestion of looking at citizen juries, but we had very little input from the community. And I think we need to look at what we can do to bring people into the process. And if one way for us to do that is to allow members of the public to ask questions, and there are now some limits placed around that, why on earth wouldn't we look at it? What are members of this council afraid of? And you know, I've heard some members say, oh, well, my details are on the website. Well, anybody listening to this who has questions, I encourage you to ring members of this council day and night with your questions, um, because clearly um, they don't want them to be asked in the public realm. And members, this isn't an issue that I intend to drop. I'm going to continue to push accountability measures. So if this is not successful tonight, um, I'll come back swinging next time. But I encourage you to support this because I think it is an exciting opportunity to improve our democracy at a local level. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Members, uh, we'll go to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Division. That is lost. All those members in favour of the motion, please rise. Councillor Martin, Councillor Donovan, Councillor Moran and Councillor Sims. Thank you, members. We go to 11.2, Councillor Sims, motion on notice, posting notice. Thank, thank you, Lord Mayor. I move the motion is printed and seek a seconder. So, Councillor Moran, thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Lord Mayor, a few months ago, Council adopted a clear position prohibiting pokies and any form of gambling from our future lease agreements. And um, indeed, I welcome that strong position. I think it is really important that Council shows leadership on this issue and we shouldn't be involved in the pokies business. What I'm proposing tonight, Lord Mayor, is an extension of that policy position. There are more than 2,000 pokey machines in the city of Adelaide, and I want to thank administration for the detailed um, comments that they've put together on this motion. I, I found that information very helpful. There are more than 2,000 pokey machines in the city of Adelaide, so this is a, a very big issue for um, our community and for our city. Lord Mayor, pokey machines literally destroy lives. As noted in this motion, 85% of problem gamblers in our state play pokies, 
and the impact is felt by at least seven, um, uh, seven other people, their partners, their children, their family and their friends. We know that there's a nexus between pokies and domestic violence and other crimes. And we know that there's a nexus between pokies and poverty. These machines destroy lives and they undermine the health of our communities. And just so that we're clear, Lord Mayor, around whether or not this is in Council's remit, I have a, a copy here of the City of Adelaide Wellbeing Roadmap from the 2016 to 2020 strategic plan. And I want to refer members to the section here that talks about the City of Adelaide residents having well-being above the global average. And it says, I'm sorry to hold it up so close, it's a bit small for me to read, but it says, we will work with the state government, community leaders and community organisations to support vulnerable members of our community. It says we will work with the community and other stakeholders through a range of initiatives to activate key areas to enable people to use the city safely and to seek to reduce crime in the city. Well, Lord Mayor, the motion that I'm proposing tonight is completely consistent with that objective because the government's proposed introduction of note acceptors, as we've heard tonight, will contribute to problem, problem gambling in our city and poverty in our city. It will make our city less safe and it will have a negative health, in, uh, a health impact. There is no clear rationale for this change other than to add to the exploitation of vulnerable people in our city and our state. Poking machines that accept notes in this way will make it easier for people to lose large amounts of money and so it will line the pockets of the pokey barons at the expense of the most vulnerable members of our community. We have a responsibility, Lord Mayor, to stand up for the interests of our residents and uh, this plan is, in my view, immoral and unethical, and I think the City of Adelaide should be taking a clear stance against it. Councillor Sims. Councillor Moran? Right. Members? If not? Um, I just uh, commend uh, Councillor Sims for this motion, Lord Mayor, if I may. Um, I think it's entirely consistent uh, with Council's approach. We have banned poker machines from all Council leased properties in future leases. We've taken the step of banning all forms of gambling from council leased premises. We won't even allow a lotto ticket or a scratchy to be sold. And in these circumstances, we've provided real leadership to uh, the community in South Australia. Uh, it is entirely consistent in the area of uh, gambling control in uh, poker machine establishments that we should seek also to ensure that people are protected from what is an addiction. Uh, one that I might add, which is not terribly well regulated by the industry itself. And I need uh, not remind you that there have been media reports of organisations which have been prosecuted for breaching uh, access to cash limits where gamblers have sought additional funds to put them in the poker machines. It, it is sensible that we should support um, all communities organisations which are attempting to address this problem. Now, um, it might be said that uh, writing a letter to the Attorney General is uh, not such a, uh, a great act, but it is important. It does signify the Council's position. And I might add, Lord Mayor, we've been writing letters to the State Government about everything from land tax to, uh, well, there's barely a week that goes by. Um, I think it's important on this issue that our voice is heard and the best way of doing that is putting our uh, hands up as being uh, in favour of more controls on the gambling industry, not less. Thank you. Councillor Donovan. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Similarly, I do support this motion because it's clearly aligned with a public health approach to problem gambling. The research speaks for itself and uh, was further provided by uh, our earlier speakers. Uh, we know from the Productivity Commission that, in fact, note acceptors specifically enhance problem gambling. That's been well documented. Uh, and we know also that typically governments spend a similar amount of uh, funds on the significant ramifications of problem gambling on all of the social outcomes as they gain in revenue. Unfortunately, they go into two different streams. So in South Australia, where gambling revenue has decreased for states, this is seen as an opportunity to increase 
uh, revenue and uh, of course that revenue is simply going to go into assisting all of those people who will suffer the very harmful impacts. So I definitely support this uh, motion and hope that others in the chamber will do so also. Thank you, members. Before I go back to the mover, I'll also actually speak to this in terms of while well, I understand that's not our core business. I wanted to raise a variation of the proper board name. Would that be okay? Yes, you may. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, point number five the uh, are we able to um, get rid of Joins United Communities and Alliance for Gambling Reform and Opposing? And we'll just change that to Opposers. Happy to accept it, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Can, can I also make one other uh, adjustment to Councillor Sims on? Uh, just mindful whether if you will accept this one as well. So in point number four, are we able to add the words? So we've got note that the state government's proposal to introduce note except the poker machines, maybe in brackets, we'll put in there um, uh, within premises uh, that the city of Adelaide owns. And I'll explain the, uh, the intent behind this. I'm not actually sure, to be honest, that that's uh, correct because they're being introduced across the board. So I don't think that adds anything. I'm, I'm not happy to accept that one, but I'm, I'll have to accept the other. Well, I guess if I've got a seconder in that, I will then um, I'll um, explain my my intent. Okay, seconder then. So, so working, what is it? What is the interest? Good idea to know for you. I didn't hear him saying that. Okay, so if we do part five first as a variation which has been agreed by the mover, we'll do that first. So, so is the meeting happy with that as a variation? So if I can have a quick show of hands please members as a variation, thank you. And now we'll go to number four which is now an amendment. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, so the intent behind this uh, this amendment is that um, it's it's all well and good for us to to go out and, uh, and advocate, but if um, if the state government doesn't want to listen to us, then uh, where does that put us? It puts us in a difficult position. So um, uh, this is there to uh, close that loophole. Um, if we have any premises that do have uh, open machines, uh, we will. Um, uh, it would be council uh, uh, policy to uh, uh, to not have um, uh, poker machines that um, uh, accept knives. And I, I think this is a, this is a, this strengthens the uh, uh, the, the motion. Um, uh, as, as I said, Lord Mayor, this is something that, um, uh, that that we can sit down and advocate for. But if the state government aren't willing to listen to us, this would ensure that we at least do our part and refuse um, uh, those machines at the. No, you wouldn't actually. Yes, um, this so I'll go to your seconder, Councillor Coros. Um, sorry, Councillor Abraham. Um, I, I must say I'm a little bit confused with. The, that amendment in number four, um, because the state government is a proposal across the oh, state. Oh, yes, uh, I'm no, thinking no, perhaps no. as a as another note, if you wanted to add something that talks to our premises separately. Yes, well, in, in that case, let's uh, let's do that. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I think I understand what you're trying to achieve, but I think it doesn't make sense within that. Correct. Point. Yes, so sorry. perhaps if you'd like to add another point yep. so we can under add four. Point two. Yep, we can uh, go on to point seven. Okay. Um, so I think what you're looking to achieve is that we don't accept them within the premises that we lease. Is That's that correct? Sorry. Do you mind if I help with some wording there? Of course. So perhaps if it says um, um, 
and notes that will not accept um, note accept a parking machines within premises owned by the City of Adelaide Council. City of Adelaide. We can we can accept that variation. Does that make sense? So it's within the within the premises that we lease. We won't accept the um, uh, the note acceptors. Oh, right. Is that the intention? That is the intention. Okay. We accept that. So, so notes council will not accept note accepted poking machines within premises owned by. That's fine. We can do that. I'll just get some advice from the CEO. Through Lord Mayor, we are bringing this matter back to you generally later this year for a conversation, um, and so we'll provide advice at the time how we would achieve it. Look, just, just some clarification. So point number seven, that first word notes, does that need to be deleted? Yeah, council. Oh, that council will not, that's correct. So Councillor Sims, um, are you happy with that variation? Yes, I am. Um, I'm still a little bit confused about what the intention is, but um, I'm happy to accept that. Can I just clarify, Lord Mayor? I assume what Councillor Abrahimsider is seeking to do is to, in addition to noting that we oppose the introduction of note acceptance machines in SA, is imposing an additional condition that says that we will not accept note acceptor poking machines within premises owned by the City of Adelaide. I certainly welcome that. I question whether we can do it within our um, existing lease uh, agreement um, but I'll take administration's um, advice on that, certainly support the intention. Can I just clarify, Councillor Abraham said that was the intention? Yes, yes it is. Thank you. CEO? Yep, through you. Lord Mayor, we will need to investigate that and we'll come back to you with clarification. Sure. I'm happy to accept that as a variation. Okay. Members? Councillor Moran. Uh, now we're back to the substantive point where this is okay. So speaking to the substantive motion, obviously it's clear that um, this is a bad idea of the state government. Um, I welcome both the um, councillors' um, suggested variations, which we and the mover have accepted. I think it's the first variation didn't strengthen it, but this suggestion, thank you, Lord Mayor, does definitely. Um, what this is sending a note out to the government saying we don't agree with this. It's obviously a foolish idea allowing problem gamblers who are, as we've heard from Mr Henley and uh, friends tonight, are of the least able to part with their hard-earned cash. This gives them the ability to part with the hard-earned cash much more quickly. Um, and I think that number, the addition of number seven strengthens it. Um, hopefully we can do that, that we ourselves will actually do something concrete in our own premises to make sure that happens. Um, I don't think there's much point in explaining it. It's obviously a foolish idea to allow people that are addicted to gambling to part with their money more easily. And um, I think uh, somebody else was saying it's a waste of time saying to the state government, we send lots of um, ideas to the state government that we oppose. That is our job as an advocate to the people. Um, and it doesn't matter if we don't have the jurisdiction to do it. It doesn't matter whether we haven't got the right to do it. We still should give our views to the state government. And surprisingly, sometimes they listen. Most times they don't, but sometimes they do. And I think when it's right, it's right. And you should, you should um, say that you disagree. Now, I did, um, I will go to you, Councillor Kerry, but I did have Councillor Kouros's hand up before. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I just want to commend Councillor Abraham today for bringing back the focus of what it is in what, it, the, what we can do as a city of Adelaide within the realm of our abilities and to be able to say that no, we do not accept. Um, Pokies in the uh, premises of it that uh, that we can control. We cannot control what happens in other businesses. Um, you know, if the state government uh, chooses to change these laws or have a re, re look at the policies, that will be great. Um, as we heard from our uh, people that spoke here tonight, that uh, the effects that the gambling does have. So I commend that uh, for Councillor Sims pointing that out to the public as well in, in in the role that he plays. But I just want to say that. 
you know, it, it, it is an advocacy motion overall, um, and that uh, it, you know, supporting, supporting, um, you know, other things that like within the unemployment rate of our city or the economic growth of our city or population growth is more important to our core of a business. But I understand what Councillor Sims is bringing here, and I commend Councillor Abraham today for bringing it forward as the uh, what the focus is and what the city of Adelaide can achieve with it. Thank you, Councillor Kieran. Oh, thanks, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, um, I, um, I'm happy to say for the record, I hate poker machines. I think they're a terrible scourge. Uh, it was an absolute tragedy when the, I think it was the Bannon government uh, introduced poker machines into South Australia back in the day. Um, that doesn't mean that one cannot voice uh, concerns uh, about particularly uh, when where you have motions uh, within a city council that, uh, that stray, that are an incursion uh, into state government uh, policy. Uh, we are we are undertaking an, an incursion into state government health policy uh, effectively, or that at least we are using health arguments. Um, so uh, whilst I whilst I do detest poker machines, I think it is not um, a counter to what Councillor Moran has said that you know we're entitled to speak about anything uh, the state government does. Sure, we are entitled to do that, but let's keep in mind that there is another side. Uh, if we stray too often into the purview of, of, of the state government, uh, what we will end up doing is we will lose respect and lose legitimacy uh, amongst our constituents and amongst our ratepayers. And that is a very important thing. Uh, we have to seek to, to maintain our authority and our legitimacy with our ratepayers. Uh, so, so it is not unwarranted to, to cite those concerns when we have something that quite plainly uh, stepping outside our uh, particular purview. Um, and just an illustration, we, th th there are grey areas here. There are always grey areas here. I was concerned, you know, when reading uh, the um, summary of the state government changes about the, uh, the deregulating of uh, Christmas Day and Good Friday. Uh, and the allowing people to, to go to poker machines on those days. Now, that, uh, there are arguments uh, in favour of, of keeping those restrictions, but you may be someone who is going through a difficult period, uh, and Good Friday and Christmas Day can be particularly painful when you have, uh, you've lost a family, you, you've lost a partner or something of that nature. And you may be going through a phase where the poker machines uh, provide a kind of a drug-like uh, a phase. What, what is, is important is that there are the health uh, measures to help people leave that phase, to move out of that phase. Uh, so the point I'm making is that, you know, taking these sort of matters in isolation, it'd be wonderful if Councillor Sims and Councillor Moran would have the courtesy of actually listening to these arguments, because I do actually believe in these Councillor Sims. Um, what, what would be important, what would be, uh, what, what is important is to remember uh, the, the state government policy is formulated in a state government chamber with lots of debate. There's a whole suite of arguments, there's a whole suite of policy prescriptions here. So there is a risk in just singling out individual uh, items uh, because there, there is often more to the story uh, than what meets the eye. So I'll leave my comments. Thank you. Councillor Martin, do you have a question? Yeah, just uh, a question for the administration. I'm a bit confused. Can the administration confirm whether this council asked you to write to the state government about its land tax reforms? I'm sorry, that is not debating the motion, Councillor. Well, no, it's central to the principle here. I'm seeking clarity. Did we do that or not? I can't quite remember, Lord Mayor. Does that mean if you ask the question that we can Sorry, Councillor Martin. We'll... Yeah, you can answer. Yes, three Lord Mayor. Yes, that was a request of Councillor. Did we write also to the state government about tram stops in King William Street that Dipti was planning? Three Lord Mayor. Yes. Did we also write to the state government about changes to licensing uh, um, uh, fees? Point of honour, Lord Mayor. I mean, is it to the motion? Yes. He is talking to the motion. He's going to ask about the fact that we're writing about this as well. So, thank you, Councillor Martin. I think we've got your point. Um, now, just before I go back to the mover, um, Councillor Kerr, I actually agree with you in that I would also wish that we had the power to ban all poker machines from South Australia. Um, and, and I'm very sad that they ever came in and I would love to get rid of them. And while this is not our core business, I do think that we have a role to advocate um, for changes that we want to see in our city and to the state, um, just as we do for the homelessness sector and around social and affordable housing. Um, so I will leave it back to Councillor Sims to sum up. 
Thanks, Lord Mayor, and I echo your um, sensible comments. And look, as um, Councillor Martin has uh, highlighted with his questioning, there is a slight inconsistency in Councillor Kira's position, Lord Mayor, because he advocated very, very strongly for this council to stand up for wealthy landlords and investors on the land tax issue, but is loath, is loath to take a position when it comes to advocating for others. Um, so it is important to point out that double standard. But Lord Mayor, I think this is a very important position for um, this council to take. As we've heard tonight um, from um, the gentleman that gave a deputation, this is uh, note acceptors will have a terrible impact um, on the city of Adelaide. They will drive up poverty, they'll have a negative health impact, and um, they'll make our communities less safe. And um, so I really encourage all councillors to get behind this, and um, I encourage everybody to take a strong position on this issue and um, give the Lord Mayor, the authority to write to the Attorney General and convey Council's position. We know that you know change doesn't happen overnight, but with strong advocacy, it does happen. And you know I, I believe in the power of um, the community to affect positive change. And one way to do that is through passing resolutions such as this, so that we can put pressure on other levels of government to step up. And um, that's why it's so important that we support this motion tonight. Members, with that, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Thank you, members. That takes us to motions without notice, and that takes us to the final items on the agenda. So uh, we have item 13, which is the exclusion to the public. Councillors, there's two items tonight uh, for consideration in count, uh, confidence. Each item requires a motion and decision in order for the exclusion to, of the public to enable consideration in confidence. If I could have a mover, please, and a seconder for 14.1.1. Councillor Abraham today, seconder, Councillor Sims. Uh, members, those in favour? Uh, members, those in favour? Members, those in favour? Councillor Moran, thank you. Those against? Councillor, that is carried. I also require a mover and a seconder for item 14.2.1. Thank you, Councillor Canole, and a seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you. If there